like what, what do they do best and what are you most concerned about? It, it seems like every week <coughs> we play a team that is good in one of two areas, which we try to focus on, obviously, turnovers. <coughs> and Rutgers and Syracuse were two of the top teams in the country. Or Rutgers and uh, Cincinnati were two of the top teams in the country from getting turnovers. Yeah, they were really good at that, and that was a huge key for us to be able to beat Cincinnati with winning the turnover battle. It's, e it's either that stat or it's, it's teams being incredibly good at creating negative plays, which Pittsburgh does a tremendous job of creating negative plays. Uh, they're, they're high in the country in sacks. So they get after the quarterback. They got you know, their schemes blitz-wise are challenging. Uh, they bring guys from everywhere, which they're, they're not as big of a blitz tendency team as Syracuse was or Rutgers was, but when they do, in certain situations, they're pretty good at it. And then, you know, run defense, being able to, to create negative plays in, in the run game is something that puts you in third down situations where they're pretty good at getting after the quarterback. And that was much like Cincinnati was as well. <clears throat> South Florida is first in the country in that, so we'll be facing it again next week as far as facing a team that does a trem tremendous job of getting after the quarterback and a tremendous job of creating negative plays, which again puts you in third down situations. How do you correct that? Because obviously you guys have problems with it last week. So you know, what do you do differently this week? You know, you, you, two things. One, you block. You got to block people. If you're engaged, you got to finish. That's the number one thing. <laughs> Which I've said for a long, you know, quite a while, a year that you know, Coach Beaton has done a good job of getting things targeted right, and we've identified what they're doing and we've targeted right, but we have that hasn't held up all the time. And from a running back standpoint and a line standpoint, we got to do a better job of holding up and finishing blocks. And then, and then when they do bring challenging blitzes where they're trying to overload you on one side, then it becomes the game where Geno's got to kind of figure that out and do things to get the ball out of his hands. Danny, you both run spreads. I think a lot of people think it's, it's passing, but what you just talked about there, both sides of the ball, the, the front lines, um, key swing factor in the game, whatever one comes out better, offense, defensive lines. I would think so, which we, we, uh, we're, we're pretty even with them, I think, when it comes to O-line and D-line. Uh, they've had some injuries on their offensive line. Uh, you know, in D-line, they, they, they've got some guys that do a good job of getting, getting after it. So, you know, I, I feel like we do too. You know, Bruce Irvin's been playing uh, a lot better. He's been playing with more energy. And he's, you, you, you've seen him, you know, get after the quarterback in the last few games. And then Julian Miller's been playing well. You know, he's, he's been a solid force. He's, he's been injured, but he's been playing through it, and it means a lot to him. Um, you know, you got guys, you, you got some guys that are, that are playing, you know, probably a little bit better than they were six weeks ago there. <clears throat> Mentioned Bruce and, and Julian there. Um, this is going to be senior day for you guys. Can you talk about this senior class and, and what these guys have meant, especially as, as a first-year coach coming in and, and establishing this program? Yeah, which that, that's one of the things we're going to talk about them with today. But, you know, the, the, you know it's the last time they're going to play here. And, and any time there's transition, the, guy it's hard, the guys that it's hardest on are seniors. You know, they've, they've been through a lot since they've been here. They've been through a couple of coaching changes. And any, any time there is change, those are the guys that it probably affects more than anything. And I got a tremendous amount of respect for you know all the seniors, but you know guys like Julian and, and Najee and Keith and and, and uh, Don Barclay and Raider and and um, you know there's the list goes on. There's about 16 of them that are going to walk out there and, and play their last game, you know, which is which is we you know, we we owe them a victory, you know. The, and the whole team needs to play a part of that. It's not about it's not about the 16 guys that go out and play their last game, you know, here in Morgantown. It's it's about everybody else that sits in these seats during a team meeting that understands that they got to do their part to try to send these guys out with a victory. You know, 100 years ago, Bud Grant once said, uh, "Offense sells tickets, defense wins championships." 100 years ago? Well, it seems like it anyway. Uh, <laughs> uh, what, what I was going to say was now. You've played 12 weeks of the season, or however long it is, and the one and two teams are probably the one and two best defensive teams in the country. Is that does that still hold? I mean, even with all the changes and all the advances in offense that we've had, looks like it. It looks like it. Which uh, you know, there's <laughs> there's some pretty good defenses in the Big East, uh, which the, the outside perception and. and uh, of, of the Big East is, is uh, you know, when you look at the record, which the records that they are this year is the same as it's been over the last few years, you know, minus 
a West Virginia team making a run, you know, a specific year. Rutgers making a run a specific year. Cincinnati making a run a specific year. It's <coughs> it's just been very very competitive, and and because it's been so competitive, I think the outside looking in says weak conference, and it's really not weak conference. It's it's a conference that plays pretty good defense, and and there's there's you know there there's about four or five defensive teams in the Big East that are all pretty pretty good. And, and again, it goes back to what I just said. I mean, it's about creating turnovers and creating negative plays and getting yourself in third down situations, which Pitt does a good job of that. And, and uh, you know, last week when we played Cincinnati, we did a good job of that. So, yeah, I, I think there's a lot of truth to it. And as much as I'd like to sit here and say that we can, you know, offensively play against anybody and, and, and uh, you know, regardless of what the score is, win the game, we're not there yet here. And, and I've been in situations at a few of the previous stops that we were in situations to do that offensively, but we're not, we're not at that point here. And I don't mind saying it, and I'm not ashamed to say it. I didn't, we didn't offensively forget how to coach. It's just, it's just been a little bit of a transition. I think Coach Graham's going through the same thing. Up at the, we're not as efficient as we want to be, which the longer we're at our respective jobs, we will become that. So the outside perspective is is that maybe because of the records, this is a weak conference. Were you maybe guilty of that yourself ever looking out at the Big East years ago before you coached here? No, you know, I, I can't tell you what I was thinking subconsciously. I didn't think about it. You know, I was, you, know, you always worry about the team that where you're at and what you're doing. I mean, that's the number one thing. But uh, you know, I, it's just there's it's it's a competitive conference. I mean, it lines up. Just look at what's happened, and, and it's starting to be that way everywhere. But I, I think here in, in the Big East, you know, with, you know, with eight teams, I mean, it's just everybody's beating everybody. And, and that's starting to trickle in a lot of the other conferences throughout the country. I think it's existed here for a while. And you get asked about recruiting every week, it seems like, but well, in relation to the Big 12, but Western Pennsylvania's always been really good to the program here, but in the past couple of years, not not nearly what it had been before. Is that something else you, you try to get back in? You know, especially if you think about what may happen with Penn State or Ohio State and how those, those might open up a little bit. Yeah, it's it's <clears throat> it's one of the areas that we identified when, when we started going out in the spring and and uh, you know as we bring guys in, as we had guys in camp, you know, it's one of the areas that we've identified that we want to focus on. You know, that, that's all I can really say about. It. I mean, I don't. Mm -hmm. You know, there's there, there's specific areas that I said we probably don't need to focus on as much, but. Western Pennsylvania has been one that I think, you know, proximity-wise, ge geography-wise, we need to we need to focus on. It's easier to get your foot in there if you play this team, maybe not every year, but regularly too. Do you think about that as far as when you when they ask for your opinion about whether you guys play again in the future? Yeah, <laughs> I think we should. Yeah, I think we should because of what it means to the community and what it, what it means to the state and what it means to Pittsburgh. And I, I, I think it I think it'd be really good for a, a number of reasons. Which, which, you know, you're going to want to play a lot of your games, your non-conference games. You're going to want to play them, you know, f fairly close based on the Big 12 being a, 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 a broader conference and we're going to have to travel four times a year. That, that's going to be, you know, quite a ways away. You know, you're going to want to play as many games as you possibly can here, which the, the biggest draw for that from a recruiting standpoint is, is we're going to play seven games here. You know, regardless of what conference you're in or, or any of that, we're going to play seven games here in Morgantown, which that, that's the biggest draw because kids, regardless of where they're from, are going to pick the school because they want to go to that school, not because of where they play their, not their, their away games at. I mean, the number one thing is is taking care of, of what we have here and what we have to offer here and making, making West Virginia as great of a place as we possibly can from a facility standpoint and an educational standpoint and an atmosphere standpoint. And, in, in a social standpoint, so and then you you want to pick your non-conference games to where, obviously you're playing most of them here, but then when you play your one or two on the road, then it's it's fairly close to home. When you get asked about previous um, backyard brawls, I mean, are there there games you've been hearing about through the years that you, know, you might not have known about previously? Yeah, I, 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 yeah, I've heard about a few, but. Um, one in particular, but uh, we're, we're, you know, it's it's more about with with me, which you know is more about you know what happened the last week and what we had to do to beat Cincinnati, and then it switches to, to Pitt, which 
to me when I think of Pitt. And that's that's the longer I'm here, the better feel I have for it. And that's a lot of off season talk. And after being in, in one, then you know you'll be able to you know get some conversation. Not not during game week, but you'll get some conversation about you know that game reminded me of back in 1980 when this happened, or back in 1992 when that happened. That that stuff happens a lot of the off season stuff. But right now it's pretty much you know worrying about yourself and getting yourself ready to play and then watching the film and then watching practice and trying to get your guys prepared to, to play schematically but not about what's happened in the past that that's more fan based media and that's that's more in the off season